In the last section of chapter 8, we're going to talk about vectors in section 8.6. What is a vector? A vector is a quantity that has both a length and a direction. The speed and direction an object moves can be represented by a vector. So the vector tells us speed and direction. You can think of a vector as a directed line segment. The vector below may be named vector AB or just vector V. Here's our initial point. Here's where we end up, which is our terminal point. That's where we end or that's where we stop. A vector can also be named using component form. The component form, which looks like this, of a vector lists the horizontal and vertical change from the initial point to the terminal point. The component form of vector CD could be written as vector 2, 3. So for example, CD would be right 2, up 3, and that is written as vector 2, 3. And that's in component form. So in example 1, write each vector in component form. So if we look at vector EF, here's what we have to look at. We have to look at a horizontal change and a vertical, vertical change. Now think of it this way, x comma y. X represents the horizontal change. Well, that's our first value. So here is our initial point. Here is our terminal point. So my horizontal change, 1, 2, 3, 4, is right 4. So that's going to be vector, and we start off with 4. And the vertical change is going down. We go down, 1, 2, 3. And so that would be 4 negative 3. So vector 4, negative 3. In B, we want to uh, look at vector PQ with P as 7, negative 5, and Q is 4, 3. Now this is pretty easy here. All you're doing is looking at the horizontal change and the vertical change. So this would be written as, vector PQ would be written as the horizontal change, which from 7 to 4 would be negative 3, and the vertical change, which from negative 5 to 3, that's going to give us a change of 8. We subtract them is all we do. 4 minus 7 gives us negative 3. 3 minus negative 5 is positive 8. The magnitude of a vector is its length. The magnitude of a vector is written as the absolute value of a vector. When a vector is used to represent speed in a given direction, the magnitude of the vector equals the speed. For example, if a vector represents the course of a kayaker's paddles, the magnitude of the vector is the kayaker's speed. For example, number two, I want you to draw the vector 4, negative 2 on a coordinate plane. Find its magnitude to the nearest tenth. Now remember, 4 represents the horizontal change, Negative 2 represents the vertical change. Since we don't know the initial point where it started at, we can just use 0, 0. Because remember, distance is going to be the same regardless on what two points we use. So for example, here we have the point 0, 0. And we go right 4 down 2 since we have a vector of 4, negative 2. And now we just use the distance formula to find the distance between the two points. So the vector is going to have a distance of, if we subtract 4 minus 0, that just gives us 4 squared, plus, and then we take negative 2 minus 0, which is negative 2 squared, which would give me 16 plus 4, which would give me the absolute value of 20. Now we want to round that to the nearest tenth, so the absolute value is approximately 4.5. So we would write that as this, the absolute value of the vector 4, whoops, that should be 4, negative 2, is approximately 4 and a half. Now if we actually had like two points here, we could say the absolute value of the vector AB or the absolute value of the vector V. Now, you could have also used Pythagorean theorem here and done 2 squared 
plus 4 squared equals c squared, and that would also have worked. Now, the direction of a vector can be given in two ways. So the direction of a vector is the angle that it makes with a horizontal line. So here's our horizontal line. The angle this makes is 60 degrees. So we could say the direction of vector AB is 60 degrees. We can also use the direction of a vector giving north, south, east, and west. So north, south, east, and west. Here, notice that this would be 60 degrees. So it's the same thing as up here. We could say 60 degrees. However, you can also say that vector AB has a bearing of northeast, 30 degrees northeast. That would also be acceptable. Or you could just say 60 degrees. So in example three, in example three, we have a wind velocity is given by the vector 2, 5. Draw the vector on a coordinate plane and find the direction of the vector to the nearest degree. Once again, use 0, 0 as your point. It's much easier if you would just use 0, 0 because that's the easiest point to deal with. So we graph this. Here it is. Now, looking at 2, remember 2 is horizontal distance and vertical change, which is represented by 5. We want to find this angle right here. So we do not know that angle. We know it's angle A. So what do we have? We want to find angle A, and we're given the opposite side and the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent means that we would use tangent. So tangent of A would be equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 5, adjacent is 2. So that would be tangent of A is equal to 5 halves. To solve this, that means the measure of angle A would be equal to the inverse tangent of 5 halves. And the inverse tangent of 5 halves, to the nearest degree, the measure of angle A would be approximately, and let me do my calculation, 68 degrees. So the measure of angle A would be approximately 68 degrees. Now, two vectors are equal vectors if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. For example, vectors u and v are equal. Equal vectors do not have to have the same initial point and terminal point. So once again, these have different initial and terminal points, yet they're equal vectors. Because if we look at them, the distance, if we actually figured that out, we could do 2 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, if we use Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared will give us the square root of 20. Well, the square root of 20 would simplify to 2 root 5. Both of these have a magnitude of 2 root 5, therefore they're equal. Two vectors are parallel if they have the same direction or if they have opposite directions. They may have different magnitudes. For example, vectors w and x are parallel. Equal vectors are also parallel. So these two up here are parallel as well. But these are completely opposite directions. Now the easiest way to look at this is I kind of look at there. I know we're not looking at slope, but if you look at slope, this goes down 1 over 2. This one goes down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. They're parallel. Now, their magnitudes are different, and that's okay. And they go in opposite directions, which is also okay. Keep in mind as well that if you had a vector that looked like this, and we called this a, b, we only could call this vector a, b. You cannot call it vector b, a. In example four, we're going to identify parallel and equal vectors. So let's look at a, equal vectors. So I'm looking at equal vectors. We have four vectors here. It's pretty obvious to see that vector AB and vector GH are equal. This one goes up 1, this one goes over 3, up 1 over 3. If I actually use Pythagorean theorem, it would be the same on each of them. So we could say vector AB is equal to vector 
GH. Now, if they're equal, that means they are also parallel. So parallel vectors, A, B, and G, H. And we can see that these two are also parallel because if we, if we were looking at slope, this one goes up 3 over 1. This one goes up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. They are parallel. So vector C, D is parallel to vector E, F. Now, the resultant vector is the vector that represents the sum of two given vectors. To add two vectors geometrically, you can use the head-to-tail method or the parallelogram method. Head-to-tail method. Place the initial point, which is called the tail, of the second vector on the terminal point, which is called the head, of the first vector. The resultant is the vector that joins the initial point of the first vector to the terminal point of the second vector. So if we're looking here, we take our first vector, which is e, vector u, this one right here. Then from here, we do vector v. And then from where the initial point was of our first vector to the terminal point of our last vector, or our second vector, we connect them to get our resultant vector. The parallelogram method use the same initial point for both of the given vectors. So here we can see we've taken u and v, same initial point, and you're going to then create a parallelogram by adding a copy of each vector. We copy vector v, we copy vector u, and then from the initial point to where they meet up here is the resultant vector. It's the diagonal of the parallelogram. To add vectors numerically, here's numerically. All we do, we just add the two x values and we add the two y values. So let's do example five. A kayaker leaves shore at a bearing of north 55 degrees east and paddles at a constant speed of three miles per hour. There is a one mile per hour current moving due east. What are the kayak's actual speed and direction? Round the speed to the nearest tenth and the direction to the nearest degree. Well, let's first draw a picture. So I'm going to have north, south, east, west. It says a kayaker leaves shore at a bearing of north 55 degrees. So that means kayaker leaves this way, 55 degrees, and at a constant speed of 3 miles per hour. Well, once again, speed is the magnitude, which is that. So that would be 3. So this represents the vectors of the kayaker. And if I do the same thing, north, south, east, west, the current has a vector of one mile an hour, due east. So that means going straight east. So this would just be one. So we now have to write the vector for the kayaker in component form. So the kayaker's vector has a magnitude of three miles per hour and makes an angle of 35 degrees with the x-axis. So we know this is 35 degrees since both of these have to be complementary. So 35 degrees, I need to find y and x to figure out the direction that we went. So what do we have here? We have 35 degrees, and we have a hypotenuse, and we, have, we need to find the opposite side, and we need to find the adjacent side. So I can start with, let's start with sine. Sine of 35 degrees. Well, that's opposite over hypotenuse. That would be y divided by 3. So y equals 3 multiplied by sine 35. y would be approximately 1 and 7 tenths. So if I find cosine, cosine of 35 degrees will give me the adjacent side, which is x over hypotenuse. So x, if I multiply 3 times the cosine of 35, 
gives me approximately two and a half. So that means my vector would be written as two and a half and one and seven tenths. Now this one, the vector just goes right one, that's it. So this vector is one zero. So we want to know the resultant vector. So remember the resultant vector is just this. Now I'm gonna make a rough sketch. So if I actually took my first vector, my first vector was three, which means if I did my x and y, it would look something like this. My vector would be right two and a half, up one and seven tenths. But then the second vector, if I go head to tail, just goes right one. So I need to know this vector right here. Well, the only thing that changed was adding one. So all you do is take your two and a half and one and seven tenths vector, and we add to it the other vector. That's it. So our final vector would be three and a half and one and seven tenths. So when adding vectors, we just add together the x values and the y values. But we're not done yet because the problem actually asks us to find the kayak's actual speed, that's with the current, and the direction. So we need to find this angle measure and the magnitude. Well, the magnitude, once again, we could just use Pythagorean theorem or distance formula, it's up to you. But if you did the distance formula, oops, we would take this, the absolute value of vector three and a half, 1.7, and if you use the distance formula, I'm just going to write down what the answer would be. It would be approximately 3 and 9 tenths miles per hour. So 3 and 9 tenths miles per hour would be your answer for the speed. And the last question asks for the angle measure formed by the resultant vector. So what would you use to find that angle measure if we're given the opposite and adjacent side? We would take tangent of, we could call this angle A if we wanted to, equals 1 and 7 tenths divided by 3 and 5 tenths. If we solve for the measure of angle A, the measure of angle A would be approximately 26 degrees.